I thought in this episode I'm going to talk about the viaduct. Um, and again, I don't have videos of um, how I made it. I took some pictures over time um, about how I built the cast and how the how I did the individual arches and then put the whole structure together. So um, I'm going to talk you through the those pictures. And of course, because it is built now, I can show you how it actually worked and um, and how it looks like probably about eight months after the the build was completed. I always wanted my layout to have. Um, some sort of main feature and um, I mean after all I'm a civil engineer and I like you know big structures and bridges so I thought that maybe the viaduct is going to be something that I I would need to build and um, so where I'm standing now is actually I'm standing on the patio so um, you know looking at the layout this corner on the on the far left side was the ideal spot because it's not obscured by any trees uh, so I thought that if I can make it nice, there could be a nice, you know, view from the house, and also from the uh, from the entire backyard. And because this is not, this would be something that I would be making. So I thought that maybe I could just use the curve and then build the the viaduct in uh, in this curve. As you can see, a few weeks have passed since the last video. So now we are in uh, what is it, the beginning of May. Uh, the spring started quite early, so there's a lot of leaves and uh, I should probably cut the grass again, which I just did last weekend. So it's getting really, really green now. And well, I just wanted to give you a, a wider view of the, of the garden and the layout, so you can see where the, um, the, the bridge is placed. There is a video, there is a DVD called uh, Garden Rail Expert, I think. It was... Um, part of the Continental Motorola 2007, one of their issues, maybe it was uh, like end of year issue or Christmas issue, which actually had, um, <clears throat> um, it did, um, had a couple of videos on various garden railways, mostly G scale, but there was a couple of uh, double O scale uh, ones as well. And then even between those introductions, there was um, basically a walk through how a garden, a double O gauge garden rail uh, layout was built. And that featured a viaduct as well. It was um, probably this length, but uh, it was about, you know, maybe um, 30 centimeters tall, so probably a third of the height of this one. And that used a technique where basically uh, using two large sheets of plywood or fiber wood, uh, fiberboard, um, the, the builder basically banked the entire um, viaduct and then uh, cut out the styrofoam um, arches, put it in between the, uh, these two boards and then filled up the entire thing with concrete. So it was a single cast for the entire bridge and I thought this is something that I would like to do as well. But then, um, I mean, mine is much taller and uh, um, it would be just too messy, I guess. Uh, so one thing was that um, <clears throat> using so many styr I mean I would need to use so many styrofoam so probably it would also cost a lot to buy you know um, enough for six of these big arches and uh, this thing probably weighs like you know the entire uh, arch entire viaduct probably weighs about half a ton so I would need to be really careful how I build the you know the mold and the structure making sure it's not going to buckle or just fall over once I pour the concrete because that would be disastrous so at the end well I decided that I'm going to create a cast for one single arch and I'm, I'm going to cast six individual pieces and this is how this uh, viaduct was made so let me take you through the pictures that I have from last year and uh, see the process step by step and also show you the um, the cast, the mold that I made for these individual arches. This is the mold for casting one of the arches. The sides are made from laminated particle board. The arch in the center is a plastic sheet which used to be a billboard sign. Various scrap lumber was used to strengthen the four sides and again scrap lumber was used to create the brace for the arch shape. 
paving blocks uh, are there to keep the arch in place and prevent the plastic sheet from caving in from the weight of the concrete. Once poured, the concrete doesn't have, does have a considerable force, so the mold has to be fairly solid. The arch is 90 cm tall, 60 cm long and 20 cm wide. The feet are 7 cm wide, leaving a 46 cm opening, 6 cm left on the top of the arch. In the middle it is slightly thinner, about 5 cm. I don't think going less than 5 cm would have been healthy. There is a single steel rod in the middle of the structure that I placed halfway uh, filling up the mold. The top and the bottom ends are screwed into the lumber post from the inside. The sides are also screwed into these posts from the outside. The entire arch shape is secured only at the bottom with screws from the outside. And of course the plastic again is screwed into the post. The long horizontal wood in the middle is just a handle, so I can lift the entire middle section out. First I unscrew the sides which come off. The top also comes off at the same time. Next I un unscrew the arch from the bottom, so that the bottom can come off. I use this post to bend the plastic inwards, uh, so it separates from the concrete. Then I hold onto the handle and gently lift, I lift the entire middle section out. These two posts slightly angled, so the arch is tapered. It is hardly noticeable, but it helps the, the plastic arch to separate from the mold and come off without any hassle. And now let's see the progress in pictures. This was even before I did the mold. I used these blocks to mark the rough place of the arches so I can get a feel of how the final structure will look like. The mix was done for me, as masons were working in the garden, but the last few arches I mixed myself. For some reason I always overestimate the water needed and my mixes end up really wet. First one is out and the next one is poor already. This was the next day. The first arch was made from a coarser grout mix, which shows a little. All six ready. The last one was poured about a week later, hence the darker color. Since I have no mixer, I mix most of them in a tub, all for work. I guess about 50 kilos go into a single arch. Five of the arches placed. There is a concrete base under the arches, which is not visible in the photo. The alignment was not perfect. I was afraid that it would fall over, but just the sheer weight kept them in place. And now all six in. I put a piece of wood on each side to close the gap in between the arches and then secure them with clamps. The diagonal wood on the side is to keep the arch perfectly vertical. I only have four clamps, so I did two gaps each day. So it took about a week to complete the viaduct. I filled up the gap with concrete and I also added some more concrete at the feet. Next step was to get the bridge to the same level as the rest of the tract. I used a fiber board supported by scrap wood to create a fence around the bridge. It was held with clamps, one per arch. This time I borrowed additional clamps from my neighbor. I had some leftover steel bars which I used to strengthen the concrete. As you can see I sort of bent them into the gap. Finally I put the concrete on top. Again my mix was too wet and you can see the result shortly. This is how the bridge looked like after the supports were removed. When pouring the concrete I ensured that it is the same level as the rest of the track, but once the concrete settled it became slightly lower. Still, not as bad as in some of the other places. Sorry for the quality of this video, I'm just too lazy to bring these parts out of the basement. So this is the um, the pieces of the, of the mold um, that I saved from last year, because I wasn't sure if uh, if my bridges are going to survive the winter, so in this case one of the arches will fall apart and I still have the mold to, to recast it. But anyway, it works out. You know, I mean, they, they are still standing. Just wanted to show what the, you know, what the wet mix does with the particle board. So even though the, it's um, edge banded, it's sort of, obviously, the, the particle board expanded because um, uh, it got the moisture from the, from the concrete and it started to, well, fall apart. Again, here you can see that the, it's cracked. But, well, this is what you can expect from the particle board. So this is not surprising. So if you want to cast something which, I mean, you need, I don't know, 20, 50, uh, you know, same parts of it, then you might want to use something else than, 
a particle board, maybe just, you know, real hardwood. But again, this is the cheapest, so it works out for smaller batches. So this one is in the worst condition, you can see it's crumbling apart. But if I would need, if I would still need to cast one or two, it will be still okay. But again, it will probably end up in the trash or in a fire or something. So the close-up of the final bridge. I think this is actually the first mold. And then... I don't know if it's the second, the third. And the last one on the right. And then again you can see that I left with probably about a 10 centimeters gap. Which I just um, filled up with concrete obviously. And then in between the arches I also had variable amount of gap. Again, that was really hand placed. So um, here in this example I had really tight ones so I couldn't really squeeze the, the concrete in between. I mean not entirely. And then again the other thing I wanted to show you, just to make sure that it's stable and not going to fall over, I added um, basically just a bit of concrete to the footing. I think I think at the end I should fill this up with earth and um, just put more grass in here. So lessons learned. I mean obviously I'm not an expert in mixing concrete and I'm not really sure why the why I have this uh, dark and sort of yellow colors. I would assume I didn't mix my concrete thoroughly and um, that is some sort of residue. But again, it doesn't seem to uh, affect the, the strength of the structure. So now I came over to the other side to show you the, the back side of the bridge. So obviously um, there are tighter gap, oh, sorry, wider gaps here and then my concrete cracked a bit. Hopefully this is not a major issue. And then here this white is um, from the fiber board that I put underneath the, uh, the mold. But otherwise I think it's, it's quite okay. So obviously the other issue I have is this really thin top layer. And I do remember that I made this mix really, really wet. And I think this is the reason why it started to crumble. So I was told that um, if, I made my, if I make my mix really wet, then the salmon comes up to the top. So it doesn't mix properly with the, you know, the rest of the concrete. And, um, well, well, this happened. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I think that if I need to repair this, this is going to be really painful. But again, sort of working for the time being. Oh, I do have a bit of cavity here, probably a rock or something. And again, so this was done, I think, midsummer last year. So it did survive one winter. Having said that, winter this year was really calm. So uh, I don't remember many frosty nights. We didn't have the usual minus 15 or minus 20, which is probably the lowest that I can get here. What I'm not sure about is what to do next. I mean, how to get this bridge from this sort of industrial look to a you know, proper finish. So I would, well covering it ties or with you know, small bricks would be uh, just um, an enormous job and I'm too lazy to do that. So I was thinking about um, sort of adding like a plaster kind of finish and then painting the whole thing white. Which would be ideal because the background is white, so it would. Uh, sorry, the background is, is is dark, so it would make it you know really stand out. But again, I'm not a mason or anything like that, so I don't know how to do that. 
Uh, so probably I have to wait and I figure out, I need to figure out what I can do, what I can do on my own or if I need to get some, you know, builders or craftsmen to do it for me. I am really happy the way this structure turned out so far. I will keep you posted if I keep working on this. But for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.